my name is Valerie Nopik with Yoga Medicine. Uh, I have a PhD in psychology and I'm also a professor of human development and family studies at Purdue University. Today I'm going to talk with you a little bit about epigenetics and neuroplasticity. You might ask why these two topics might be of importance. Well, in the world of mental health and wellness, these topics are really important because we have this capacity to actually change our internal landscape or change the way that our neurons kind of connect and fire. And some of that is thought to be due to epigenetics. So there are a few things that kind of play into a model of behavior. Our genes or our biological predisposition is one thing. Our experience also plays a role. So you can think of that as kind of like these environmental influences. And also importantly, and perhaps something that we don't think about very often is our perception of our current situation. And our perception of our current situation matters quite a lot, especially if we don't feel like we're in control of our current situation. And that feeling of control can be due to a lot of different things. So we have our biology playing a role, our experience playing a role, and then our perception of our current situation playing a role kind of creating this kind of model of behavior. You can think of behavior as mental health and also mental wellness or resilience. So let's take a moment just to unpack the biology part of this. So much, in fact, everything about who we are is driven by our genome, our DNA. And our, there's this aspect that kind of this thing called the epigenome that you can think of as sitting kind of on top of our DNA. So if you were to unravel all of the chromosomes that live in each of our individual cells, if you were to unravel those chromosomes out to their full length, you'd see a string of letters, A, C, T's, and G's, and that, that's our DNA, that's our genome. And that genome is important for coding everything about who we are. What cells become what kind of cells, how our genes work and function, it's all kind of coded in our DNA. And then the epigenome can kind of be thought of as this thing that sits on top of the genome. And the epigenome can change how our genes are expressed. It doesn't change the underlying DNA code, but it changes how our genes are expressed. It can make genes turn on, like scream, or it can make genes turn off or whisper. You can think of it like a dimmer switch. And so our epigenome, our epigenetics, are things that kind of, sometimes they're part of a natural part of development. Um, they tell heart cells to become heart cells and brain cells to become brain cells. And they tell certain genes to turn on and off at certain points of our life. Like for example, when we're all going through puberty, certain genes need to turn on to get us through that process and then they turn off. But then there are also other things in our environment, things like traumatic experiences um, and things like that, that can also lay down some epigenetic marks on top of our genome to change how our genes are expressed and can actually lead to mental health challenges. And when we can understand that we have some control over that to some degree, that we can actually change our internal landscape, that's something really powerful. And there's a lot of research to support that there are certain yoga-related modalities that actually can kind of help our environment get under the skin in a really good way. So we can lay down positive epigenetic marks that can offset or reverse some of the negative epigenetic marks that might be laid down due to things like trauma or stress. One of the ways that epigenetics might work is through neuroplasticity. And what neuroplasticity means is this is our brain's ability to actually kind of reorganize itself. It reorganizes itself by creating new neural connections. I don't know if any of, that, any of you have ever heard of this phrase like use it or lose it. If you don't use parts of your brain, you're gonna lose those connections. Well, you can flip that around and think like, well, the connections that I really use a lot, those are the ones that are going to be, that are going to be reinforced and strengthened. So if I'm constantly thinking that, oh my gosh, why is all of this happening to me in a negative way? those negative thought patterns are going to be reinforced and those brain connections are going to be reinforced. If on the flip side, I think about something like, what can I learn from this situation? This is a really hard situation that I'm in, but what can I learn from it? 
I've changed my cognitive perception of my situation in such a way that if I continue to take something positive from it, what can I learn from this? What is this teaching for me? As opposed to, why is this happening to me? Then I'm forging new positive neural connections. I'm reinforcing positive thought patterns and forging these new neural connections in my brain. One of researchers' biggest takeaways, or one of the biggest and most prominent takeaways for me, in addition to things like meditation and yoga-centered techniques that can also help us get under the skin, is this concept of community support. So, so much of how we perceive our current situation is due to the resources that we have available to us. These are situations where if you tap into being connected to other people, those connections can help retrain your, your brain in different ways as well and create neural pathways. So we're gonna focus on this aspect of, of community support in a brief kind of technique that I'm going to introduce to you. And it will require you to have a partner um, but if you don't have a partner, you can, you can sit up against a wall because that will still give you some personal feedback of your breath. But we're going to tap into actually connecting with another person non-verbally and without even looking at them. And through that connection to another person and actually training your brain to think a little differently about connecting with a person that isn't, not, that isn't verbal and that isn't face-to-face, -face, we can retrain and create some new neural pathways to help us really kind of linger and live in that support, which can bring about a great foundation for launching off into mental health and wellness. So let's get on our mat, and I'll walk you through a brief technique kind of tapping into some community support. So for this brief exercise, find a partner um, if possible, and if you don't have a partner handy, you can do this against the wall, but the intention here is to really feel the support of another person because so much of our um, ability to respond to the daily pressures of our lives and to kind of change our internal landscape is a function of the resources that we have available to us to meet the demand of those challenges and there's so much research to support that having the support of another, another person, whether that's a friend, a loved one, a spouse, um, whatever it, whoever it might be, having that support and being able to tap into that support can be so incredibly useful for mental health and wellness. So if you have a partner, sit back to back with that person and try to line up as much of your spine and the backside of your body with that person as possible. So see if you can get the backs of your shoulder blades to touch and the backs of your head to touch. And this is gonna change and be, you have to be a little flexible based on the height differences between you and the person that you're working with. And then just each of you have your hands rest comfortably on your thighs, let the elbows kind of dangle below the shoulders and let your eyes close. And then without speaking or really moving too much, just begin to tap into the sensations that your partner's body is making when they take their breath in and out. So notice the movement of the, the back of their ribs as they inhale and as they exhale. Notice any other movement as well. You might notice if there's a shift in their shoulder blades or a shift around the lower part of their spine. Are they really relying on you to hold them up here? Or can you find this place where each of you kind of has the same amount of pressure on each other so that you can begin to sync up your breath? So that as your partner inhales, you're also inhaling. And as your partner exhales, you're also exhaling. And you're doing all of this non-verbally, so silently. You are syncing up your body with your partner's. And just notice how powerful it can be to 
tap into and connect to somebody else without speaking, without looking at them. But just by training your body and your mind to pay attention to these things that we don't usually pay attention to how our bodies move when we breathe. We don't often pay attention to how our friends' bodies move when they breathe. When you begin to just shift your perspective enough so that you can tap into the movement of your partner, try to sync your body's movements with theirs. And the interesting thing that I've learned from teaching this several times is that some partners really love the sensation of syncing their bodies together, like their movement of their breath together. Whereas other partners have played with what it feels like to do the opposite. So for example, I would take the breath in and my partner would be exhaling at that time so that you're doing these opposite movements and notice what that feels like. And for some partners, that feels a little bit more supportive. But again, you're kind of experimenting with all of this silently, non-verbally, and just connecting with another person in this kind of non-confrontational way, this way that really fosters support. And it's this support of our partners, of our friends, of our communities that can be so incredibly valuable and in helping us to shift our perspective and shift our, our thought patterns which can help kind of create and forge these new neural pathways that can be so instrumental in kind of mental wellness. So you feel free to linger here as much as you might like. linger in this connection to another person for support. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you found this very brief introduction into epigenetics and neuroplasticity and how they relate to our mental health and wellness. I hope that, I hope that you found it useful. Um, I've hoped that this technique of kind of tapping into another person and another um, yeah, just another person to help that you generate these feelings of support has been useful to you as well. And if you're interested in learning more, join me and the yoga medicine team at the upcoming mental health module.